Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna be shooting the Olympus OM20 using the zone focusing and hyperfocal focusing modes on the lens, which basically means I can just walk around here and shoot pretty quick on the streets, taking pictures without worrying about my focusing. I've already got that dialed into the lens. And uh, for any of you guys who are a little bit unfamiliar with zone focusing or hyperfocal focusing, well, that's all those little tiny funky colors and numbers on your lens that you might not know about. I'll give you a quick overview. We'll get back on the streets and we'll put it into practice. So I'm just gonna take a photograph of you ladies outside your shop. And it's gotta be within 10 and two meters. Yeah, that looks about right. Let's come back a bit more. I've still got some more room to play with, I think. Between 10 and two meters. Take coffee. Done. <laughs> well done, thank you. So today I'm going to be taking photographs using my Olympus OM20 camera, a 35mm camera and also two lenses, a 28mm lens and a 50mm lens around the streets. I'm going to be using zone focusing and hyper focal focusing as well. So I'll just quickly explain what that is and what all these numbers mean on your lens. So obviously we know that this is the aperture selector here on my lens. I can choose whichever aperture I want. If I come down here, you've got the corresponding aperture values down here these numbers that's what they are and these numbers is your distance scale orange is in feet and white is in meters if i turn the lens around you can see a little tiny indicator there meters and feet so let's first of all look at hyper focal focusing we can see that i'm already shooting f16 so you've got your little tiny infinite sign or infinity sign there if i bring that infinity sign to f16 a distance scale is going to tell me that at f16, anything between just maybe under three feet all the way to infinity will be in focus. Pretty simple. So if I take a shot with this focusing in value, one foot is going to be out of focus, two foot slightly out of focus. As soon as I start getting to just under three feet and beyond is going to be in focus. And now if we come to the center of the lens, that's my hyperfocal distance there. It's saying around about five feet. So that's pretty much going to be the sharpest uh, between that scale. But it's pretty much saying to me that everything will be acceptably sharp. But in the middle there, around about five feet is my, um, is my bullseye target, if you like. And if I want to shoot at, say, f8, to keep things simple, I'll bring my infinite sign or infinity sign to eight on the scale down the bottom there. And now it tells me I'll be in focus from around about five feet all the way to infinity. So that's exactly what that does. It just helps you focus in, uh, using your zone focusing or hyperfocal focusing, and it saves you faffing around on the street uh, trying to get focus instead of um, you know missing shots as such. You can already set your zone. And it's pretty much as simple as that. If you like working in meters, you've got the meter scale there or the feet scale. Let's have a look at zone focusing at it can be pretty handy if I go back to f16 if I'm out on the street and I want to take photographs of uh, you know interesting looking people or crowds or what have you I can just set my zone focusing so that I don't have to look through the viewfinder and keep focusing every time I want to take a shot so let's say for example I go to f16 I want to shoot at the furthest point away six feet so there you go I've set that to six feet and now it's telling me that anything between just under two feet and six feet is going to be in focus. So I've got this complete zone area to plot my subject when I'm walking around and be happy to take photographs. I'd rather in this situation kind of go in the middle so hopefully my subjects will be around about four feet away. Then I know that they're going to be pretty much in focus, um, give or take a smidge. And of course, if you're going to start coming down the aperture scale to your f5.6 and f3.5, that's more shallow depth of field, so don't forget when you do that, your, um, your zone focusing is going to be much smaller and more hit and miss. So when I'm using zone focusing, I'd rather sort of come to the F11s, F16s, and that gives me much more uh, focusing in my zone area. So now I've put a different lens on the camera. This one is a 50 millimeter lens, and obviously because of the focal lengths, between 28 and 50 millimeter, this one is gonna change. You don't think to yourself, because you've shot uh, 28 millimeter zone focusing, if you put a 50 mil lens on it, it's gonna be the same, it's not. So let's have a look at this one, F16 again. My hyper, hyper focal will be anything from eight feet all the way to infinity. 
whereas the 28 mil lens was just under three feet, if you remember. And using the 50 millimeter lens, as opposed to the 28 mil, my zone focusing is gonna be a lot narrower uh, than the 28. So if I wanna shoot six feet this time at F16, that's telling me that anything between kind of like nearly four feet and six feet is gonna be in focus. So uh, a little bit narrower uh, focusing field, if you like, for you to shoot with. Or I can use the meter scale there. So I can say anything between, say, three meters and 1.5 meters is gonna be in focus. So that's all the zone focusing is. It's just a, it's a really cool feature to use if you're out uh, taking pictures on the, off the fly, you know, and you haven't got time to start messing around looking through the viewfinder. This is the Zeiss Icon Netar 6x6 medium format camera, and this distances scale is in feet there's no meters it's only in feet and this is really handy if you haven't got a range finder because these are view cameras you can only uh, you know you can't see through the lens of what you're focusing on so you need a range finder if you haven't got one you can get around it by using the zone focusing or the hyper focusing um, on these lenses so you can see the distance scale there is in feet there's my apertures on the bottom ring and uh, exactly the same as the other cameras and the same again, another little view camera, the uh, Kodak Retinet, beautiful little cameras these are. And there's the distance in scale, you can see my apertures on the top plate there with the arrow. And uh, exactly the same again, this is, there's the infinity mark, and there's all your zones. This one again is in feet as well, no meters on that one. And the same again, this camera's the Bronacree TRS, on this lens you can see, this is a 50mm lens on medium format, and these are nice big numbers for you to see on this one. Uh, and there's the distance scale there, all your zone focusing and your hyperfocal as well with your infinity mark. So it all does the same thing. It's a really handy useful feature if you're into landscape photography or seascape photography as I am where you can actually measure your distances and make sure that you get uh, parts of your scene in focus. But it's also really good for street photography where you can just shoot off the cuff and get your subject on the street reasonably in focus. So the first few shots, I've already set the camera to f16 and the first few shots I'm going to be using the hyperfocal. So I've set my infinity mark to f16 on the depth of field scale and it's telling me Let's have a quick look. Da, 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 da. Telling me anything between nearly three meters or just under three meters and infinity will be in focus. So uh, I'll put the GoPro on top of the camera. You guys can see my point of view. I'll take some shots and I'll show you as we go along. So those were a few hyperfocal shots. I'm now going to go and do some zone focusing around the streets. I've still got the lens at f16, so I've set the lens uh, to, to my zone to be uh, at most three meters away, which gives me around about just under one and a half meters to three meters, which is going to be my zone for focusing. So again, I don't have to worry at all about focusing. I just need to make sure my subjects are falling within that zone between just under one and a half meters and three meters and take my shot. Of course, I've still got the depth of field preview if I need to use it, but I'm not going to use any of that. I'm just going to use the uh, through the lens to, to get my compositions and that's it. No focusing at all. Let's get on. So I've got this, say this for example, one and a half to three meters, around about one and a half meters is where that railing is. And I would say that back railing is still kind of in the three meter zone. So my zone is gonna be just where that lady walked to this rail here. Let's take a shot and see if it will be in focus. So I've just changed it again, this time same, F16, between 10 and 2 metres is my zone. So let's take some photographs of subjects within that zone of 10 and 2 metres. I can figure metres out better than I can feet in my mind, so you know, you've got to understand your distances a little bit. Let's have a meal down here. The good thing about shooting this zone between 10 and 2 meters, I've got a lot to play with within that zone, you know, so I don't have to get up in front and personal with people. I've got 10 meters to play with. Ideally, get those people within around sort of six, seven, eight meters, because um, I'm wondering whether 10 meters or at least two meters maybe might be just a little bit 
less sharp than maybe four meters so or five i don't know we'll soon see so we've got something here i reckon that sign there is about two meters away and maybe that one over there is possibly within the 10 meter range so if that's the case i should be able to get that sign and that sign relatively in focus in certainly anything in the middle let's have a go so i've now set the lens to f8 and using my zones i've set my zones uh, between two and three meters so obviously three being the furthest away two being the closest so anything between uh, two and three meters should be in focus that's narrowed my scale down quite some quite some bit you know it's kind of um between two and three meters it uh, doesn't give much margin for error so uh, we'll have to try and calculate that a little bit more and see what happens so i'm reckoning that sign at the moment is between two and three meters away from me See if we can get some people in the shot at the same time. So this is my mate Steve, he owns this uh, beautiful gallery here, all these lovely prints that he does of the island. And Steve, I just bumped into him, he's gonna take a picture of me between two and three meters. <laughs> so you tell me where to go, Steve. That's about two meters, isn't it, I think. That's oh, that's about, about two, yeah? Two and a half, yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> Perfect. That's about between three and two, isn't it? Easily. So you look out of focus in here, but I know it won't be. Got it. All right. I'm going to run off. See you, Catch you later, mate. Yeah, I'll see you soon, all right, Steve? Yeah. Change lens is over. I'm now on the 28mm lens, so that's going to give me more zones to play with because of the focal length of the lens, obviously. I've now set it to f16 and uh, hyperfocal again on this one. What am I doing? So pretty much anything just under a metre to infinity will be in focus. Let's try it out. Yeah, just soaking some photographs around town. Give us a little thumbs up outside your fan, mate. Cheers. So this time I've gone to zone focusing again and F16, I've set my zone to be, I um, can't remember now, <laughs> uh, anything up to three metres. So it says between just under a metre, so, so anything between uh, just over half a metre and three metres will be in focus. So I've got to make sure anything is in my zone within that kind of range. Let's uh, see what we can do. So I reckon this post here is just under a metre from me and that one is around about three metres, maybe a little bit more. Let's see what we get. Ready? Yeah. Done. Yeah, shoot two through here. See all this? Yeah. Do you want a picture of the bloke that done it? Go on in. I'll get him to come out. Hey? He's in the pub, I'll get him to come out. Oh, is he? Oh, what, do built all this? Yeah. Oh, go on then. So I'm just chatting to a gentleman and uh, he's going to find me the bloke that built all this. He's in the pub having a, having a beer. He built all this, I'll take a picture of him. <laughs> no, no, that's only this bit of paper. Oh, right. Yeah. So how long ago did you do all this? Well, we we're trying to work for 40 years. 40 years ago? Yeah. 40 years, yeah. Crikey. Right through on his own. Uh, let's get a picture in the middle of the alley then. Uh, yeah. Just just about there will do. Hey, I'll tell you what, I'll get this um, sign in. I'll get the sign in. I'll, I'll get How far is that away from me? That's about... That sign is... Uh, about me. You need to be about three metres. Come forward a bit more. That's it, just there. You should be about three metres away. Ready, here we go. One, two, three. Gotcha. <laughs> Let me get one of you and your mate, and then I'll be on my merry way. <laughs> We've been together a year. My husband. There you go, guys. All right, nice talking to you. Yeah, cheers. And you, thank you. He takes some putting up with it. <laughs>
I'll see you later, guys. Take yeah, care. Well, yeah. Not quite what I expected. I was uh, <laughs> normally I would have done the old focus thing, you know, but I will. I'm keeping it to zone focusing, so I didn't touch the focus at all. I just relied on putting them in my zone. Hopefully, they've come out all right. You guys have already seen it. All right, so this <laughs> shot here between three and one meters. So I reckon in one, two, the third flag along long is about a meter up to three meters along. Let's see if we can get it. This shot here, I've gone on hyperfocal now, so I've set my infinity mark to F16, uh, which is the aperture I'm shooting, and it reckons around about just over half a metre should be in focus, which should be that sign and the shop in the background for that bike. And the fun part about zone focusing sometimes is you can just, uh, you know, get your composition. If you want people in your shots, just wait for those people to walk into your zone and take your photograph. They don't even know you're taking their photograph if you want to be uh, quite discreet about it, you know, without jumping in people's faces. But, uh, you could just plot up, get your composition and just wait for something to happen, you know, whatever that composition may be. Like this shop here, this Chinese takeaway, it says good fortune. I could sit here and plot and wait for someone to walk past, maybe on crutches or maybe someone that's broken their leg. But the whole story comes together, you know. Right, they've knocked out a building there recently, the last few weeks. They've knocked this big building out and they're going to be putting something there, probably flats or something. But let's take a picture of that because that might be worth taking a picture of at some point. Got it. F16. See if I can get closer to get a shot. I'm not going to look for the viewfinder, I'm just going to snap from the hip. See how close I can get. I can get as close as nearly one metre. Oh, one's gone. <laughs> the heavens have opened up, it's pissing down. I'm lucky I've got my hat on now, so I think I'm going to close this vlog on. I'm not going to do any more photographs. This is not going to clear for a while, so <laughs> good old British weather, eh? <laughs> hurrah, hurrah. Um, anyway, so yeah, zone and focal, hyperfocal focusing, that's what I've been doing in this video uh, with a 50mm or a 28mm lens. And like I say, I've been asked many a time on direct messages and emails if I could explain what it is or show a video of what it is, so I've done a video on it now. And I use it quite a lot, it's really handy for, you know, when you're doing street photography, you don't have to sit there and start faffing around with your focus. Or, you know, maybe portraits, if you take portraits of people in the street, you're not wasting their time by trying to focus in. You've got them in the zone, you take the shot. Uh, and also, if there's anything interesting um, on the street that you're not going to miss, do you know what I mean? Um, you could just take the shot without looking through, or at least without um, trying to get your focus right. You look through the uh, viewfinder to get your composition, or you might want to shoot from the hip. Just wait for those compositions to come into your zone and take the shot and nine times out of ten if you're if you're accurate enough you'll get it in focus i'm not sure if it's as accurate if it's as sharp as um, looking through the viewfinder and really getting a pinpoint focus on your subject but you know that's not the case here because street photography you are you're probably going to miss miss the action if you do that so it's a really good way to uh, guarantee that you can just you know not one thing left to one thing less for you to worry about is the focusing and um, you know, just go and enjoy your photography without sitting there trying to focus up on things. And I find it quite handy when I'm doing street photography, uh, instead of faffing around trying to uh, look through the viewfinder and trying to get my focus on stuff. The amount of times I've missed shots doing that. So uh, anyway, guys, hope this video uh, has been helpful to a lot of people out there on zone focusing, hyperfocal focusing. Let us know in the comments uh, if any of you guys have got anything to add to this. I'd love to know. This is what I do. I'm getting wet. I'm going home. Catch you later. <laughs>